All right, I'm not really good at using the Celo theorems, so the only way to fix that is to do Celo theorem exercises. And so here we go. Oh, and by the way, I just ordered a new mic, so hopefully the sound quality is going to jump drastically um, one of these days pretty soon. But until then, still using my current one. So anyways, let's get to work on this exercise, which is the first exercise in this um, section, so naturally it's not too difficult. Uh, but let's see. So we have p, h, and g, and so first let's write um, the order of g as, see so here, he usually uses, or they usually use because it's dummit and foot, p to the alpha m. Uh, then the order of p, because it's a p celo subgroup or celo p subgroup, whatever, um, it's p to the alpha, and let's see here. So H is a subgroup of G. So the order of H hmm. What's the best way to do this? Um See here, since um, P is a subgroup of H, um, the order of P divides the order of H. Um, I.e. P to the alpha divides the order of H. Um, but we also have H H is a subgroup of G, so the order of H divides um, P to the alpha M. Uh, so the order of H we can write as uh, P to the beta N, where N divides M. Um, then obviously since P to the alpha divides H, um, this uh, beta must be alpha um, here. Let's write that sense. P to the alpha divides H. Um, beta equals alpha. And so the order of H equals P to the alpha N. See here. Since N divides M and um, by definition of a PCLO subgroup, P cannot divide M. We know that P does not divide N because if P did divide N, then it would divide M as well. Um, and so, yeah. So then Let's see, the order, so then P is a subgroup of H, and let's see, the order of H is equal to P to the alpha N, and the order of P is equal to P to, or the, yeah, the order of P is equal to P to the alpha, and P does not divide N, and so therefore, that's exactly what it means to be a PCLO subgroup of H. Uh, so then P is in CELO P of H. And so, here we go. That's that. Um, so for the next part, what we're looking for in the next part is we want to find examples of G, H, and P where um, P is still a PCLO subgroup of G, No, P is a PCLO subgroup of a subgroup of G, but it's not. So we want G, we want P, H, and G where P. Um, we want um, 
p, h, and g such that p is a subgroup of h, which is a subgroup of g. p is in silo p of h, but p is not in silo uh, p of g. So this is basically um, we're, we're flipping uh, CELO PH with CELO PG in the, from the previous part. In the previous part, we know if uh, we have this P containing H containing G and P is in CELO PG, then P is in CELO PH. And now we're flipping that and f showing a counterexample to prove that it doesn't work. And it turns out it's not very hard. If you think about this, it's not really tough to come up with a counterexample. Um, so let G B C T uh, G B C two cross C two and P equals H equals C two. Um, order of P equals order of H equals two. So then obviously P is in because uh, normally you need something of the form p to the alpha times m, and here p is 2, alpha is 1, and m is just 1. And obviously p does not divide 1. And so we have p is in the silo 2 of h. However, the order of g is, let's see here, it's C2 cross C2, so it's 2 times 2 equals 4. So, um, if K is in the CELO 2 of G, then the order of K must be equal to 2 squared, which is 4. And so the fact that the order of P equals 2 imply, ugh, I don't know why my writing is a little weird. The order, the, the fact that the order of P is equal to 2 implies that P is not contained in CELO 2 of G. And that's exactly what we wanted for the last part there. And so... Here we go, we've completed our proof.